Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the launch of the 34th America's Cup. We're here at the BMW Oracle Racing Base in Valencia. This broadcast is being streamed live around the world. So welcome to those who are joining us online. Our special guests here today are Vincenzo Onorato, President of Mascalozoni Latino, Claudio Morelli, President of Club Nautico di Roma, the challenger of record. Winning the prize for longest journey is Marcus Young, Commodore of the Golden Gate Yacht Club, the defender of the America's Cup. Also joining us are VIPs from potential challenges for the 34th America's Cup. So why not introduce Russell Coots, Chief Executive of BMW Oracle Racing. I know what Russell is going to talk about amounts to the most profound change in the long and illustrious history of this marvelous event. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Coots. Thank you, Ken. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and welcome. Um, and uh, a special welcome to Vincenzo and the Commodores, Claudio and Marcus. Welcome. And welcome also to the many distinguished guests we have here from around the world, from uh, existing teams and also potential teams. Today, I'd like to talk about the future, about transforming the America's Cup to make it fit for that future. But before that, let me take you back 160 years to a time where the telegraph was the iPad of the day. There are lessons that we can learn from history. Then, the Commodore of the Royal Yacht Squadron needed to stimulate interest in his club's regattas. So what did he do? He lifted his eyes to the horizon and looked beyond the shores of Britain. He learned that a group of New York businessmen were building a schooner that they intended to bring to Britain in 1851. To answer these questions, we spoke to the teams. We spoke to the commercial partners, to the media, and to the fans who are the beating heart of any sport. We also looked beyond sailing to understand best practice in other sports such as Major League Baseball, NBA, basketball, NASCAR auto racing and consulted leading experts advising some of the biggest events in world sport including Champions League soccer and Formula One. We also invested heavily in our own research carrying out television trials and reviewed dialogue and data from past America's Cups. From all this work emerged a clear and compelling plan. First, we have to establish continuity and stability for the long term. Then, we need to capture and communicate the excitement our sport can produce. As sailors, we all know the excitement that we feel on board the boat. We have to find better ways to transmit that um, to the audience that are watching. And we need to have the best sailors in the world racing the coolest and fastest boats in the world. In other words, we could have pressed the repeat button and organised the 34th America's Cup, much the same as the 2000 Cup here in Valencia. Then the boats were relatively even, and some of the racing was great. Even so, when we looked into it deeply, the commercial and media returns fell well short of a coherent, cohesive model that would create a sustainable or that would create sustainable teams and encourage sponsors that the new class of America's Cup is going to be fast, let me tell you, you're absolutely right. However, a tight design space will keep the racing close. As I've mentioned the new AC72 class several times, you're probably itching to get a look at it. But first, an explanation. We studied both monohulls and multi-hulls and looked what it would take, looked at what it would take to make an America's Cup boat more exciting for the fans and sailors. 
In the case of the Maldi hole, we have several fundamental questions. One, would they be challenging votes to sale and compelling viewing to the audience we saw? Two, could we transmit the speed and adrenaline felt on board to the viewer? Three, could they produce great match racing? And finally, and possibly most crucially, would this new class open the door to other teams from elsewhere in Salem who'd never contemplated the America's Cup before? The overwhelming answer to all of these questions was yes. Vital to the AC72 is also an X factor. This new boat has to have an aura about it. Like a Formula One car, you know, we all uh, think we know how to drive cars. And some of us enjoy driving cars reasonably fast. But I think everyone in this room would understand that driving a Formula One car takes special skills. I doubt whether many of us, if any of us, could, let alone get off the starting group, let alone get around the lack of a course. So, the AC-72s are going to be pretty special, very powerful, and very demanding. Now, I can imagine an optimist sailor looking at this boat and thinking, wow, one of these days, maybe I can sail on, on, on a boat like that. Maybe I can sail on the America's Cup. It must be a boat that reconnects the America's Cup with the young talent, the sailors that will be tomorrow's stars. And it must encourage a new, larger audience to turn on and tune in. In fact, let's tune in now and watch a video which recalls many of the great uh, experiences in past America's Cup.